Welcome, welcome. We've got something pretty cool today to take a look at from Crawford and Lift. Um, so just got my hands on this thing yesterday. Wanted to show a little video of what this thing's all about. Uh, walk you guys through an installation um, just to see the different ways that you can utilize this new scope rail. Um, so what we have here today from Crawford and Lift is the MOA adjustable scope rail mount uh, for your FX impact. So what Steven did is pretty much made adjustable rings for any sort of long distance shooting with your FX impact pretty much obsolete. Um, so what this guy is, it's uh, kind of a two-in-one rail and we'll kind of go over what uh, you know you can do with it and the different features about it. Um, but the most unique thing that I want to show you right off the bat is the fact that you are able to adjust your MOA. Now, not only can you adjust your MOA with this rail, um, the thing that makes this stand out against adjustable scope rings, um, or sometimes even those adjustable scope bases, is the fact that you will get consistent MOA adjustments every single time you adjust this rail. Um, so how that's accomplished, and you saw me just take out this rear bolt here, is the scope rail, so the pick rail itself, it's on a hinge system. Now, typically what you see when you buy systems similar to this is you have this hinge system, but the, the hinge system itself, it really depends on where you lock it in place to determine how much you know, adjustment or how much MOA um, that you're getting off of the rail itself. What makes this stand out and what makes this very unique is you can see there's these little, I call them uh, you know, little adjustment bumpers that will let you lock this rail in to specific MOA adjustments. Um, so this rail will go all the way from zero MOA, so just like having a normal uh, you know, flat top uh, scope mount rail, all the way up to 120 MOA. Um, so it's a very wide range. The thing, like I said earlier, that I love about this scope rail is the fact that you will get consistent adjustments every single time due to how Crawford and Lip locks this MOA adjustment in. Um, so you're able to go from zero to 20 to 50 to 80 to 100 and then finally 120 MOA of adjustment for your scope. Um, and like I said, the thing that uh, you know like makes this stand out is the fact that uh, it's consistent. Uh, so you never will there be a time you're like, ah, you know, let me adjust it up here, lock it in, and you know, I think that's about 100 MOA. Um, you know, with the Crawford and Lift rail, I know that my 100 MOA mark is that second hole from the front, and if I lock this back in place, I've got 100 MOA of adjustment. So. With this, and I'll just show you how this works, it's got this little slider piece that you can lock in, and it will let you adjust all the way from zero to 20, and then up to 50, and then we've got the 80 in there, the 100 MOA adjustment, and then finally, we've got that big old 120 MOA of adjustment on your scope. Once you've got that set, it's pretty darn simple. You just reinstall and lock that rear bolt in. And then on the other side of this, that's the cool thing about this little bumper. Uh, you are able to lock that in place as well with some solid three millimeter hex bolts right there. Um, so nothing's going to move, nothing's going to shake once you have this thing locked back into place. And again, uh, you know, I feel that's another very, very important feature to, you know, have on an item like this or an accessory like this for your FX impact. So another cool thing you can do with this rail. Um, the base of this scope rail, it's based on a low profile dovetail rail design. Um, so some of you who, uh, you know, seen me on Instagram or, uh, you know, seen some of my short videos I posted recently, um, you know, recently I've started to do NRL 22. Now, the cool thing about NRL 22 is with an air rifle, you can go up to 25 caliber slugs or 30 caliber pellets. The uncool thing doing NRL 22 with an air rifle, especially if you have an FX impact or something that has a front bottle, due to the design and uh, you know that front bottle takes up height, then your scope takes up height. Um, you will run into issues occasionally fitting your rifle in some of the obstacles 
for the Courses of Fire for NRL 22. Um, so that's the other reason I love this rail. Uh, for NRL 22, what I do is I actually take off the MOA adjustment because typically you're maxing out on 100 yards for NRL 22, and that's if your club runs uh, option one. And even with option two in play, you know, the max distance I've seen on that is somewhere around 175 yards, 200 yards max. So you don't really need the, the huge amount of MOA adjustment. And what you'd rather have in its place is a very low profile rail, let you sit your scope down nice and tight to uh, the chassis of your rifle. So that way when you're trying to fit it in between say like a ladder rung, or you're trying to fit your rifle in between, uh, you know, the base and the back of a folding chair, um, it'll actually fit. Um, so that's one of the problems I ran into earlier this year when I ran my first NRL 22 event um, with how I had my impact set up and due to the height of the scope that I had as well, um, I actually was not able to really fit it in between the ladder for that particular stage for the course of fire. Um, so that uh, definitely helped alleviate those concerns by utilizing this rail. And uh, like I said, if I wanna go super long distance, um, I'm gonna be able to pop these MOA adjustment parts back on and uh, you know, pretty much have at it. So pretty darn cool. So what we're gonna do here is uh, you know, take a look. I'm gonna bring my M3 on the bench and we're gonna replace the stock scope rail with the Crawford and Lip adjustable MOA scope rail mount. So let me pull this guy up here. And you'll notice there uh, are some pieces missing from my M3 on the rear. Um, I've got something really cool coming, uh, you know, that's cooking right now. So not going to go over that and uh, take away from this scope rail today. But uh, you guys will definitely see it once that uh, little project's complete. So what I'm going to do first to mount this rail is I'm going to take off the Picatinny scope rail itself. So I'm just going to loosen up these three millimeter hex bolts, pops right off the dovetail. And what you do is you take off your stock scope rail. And so it's a two and a half millimeter in the back. So you've got two of those guys, those nice and loose. And then you've got the big four mil in the front. And we'll pop this off if it wants to cooperate here today. There we go. And I'm actually going to pop out the front mounting bolt. You'll actually need to reuse that with the Crawford and Lift rail. So let me just get these two other little mounting screws that came with it here. So pretty darn simple. Uh, once you get ready to mount up the dovetail rail itself. Goes right in the factory location. Uh, one other thing that I appreciate that uh, Steven at Crawford and Lip did is he made the tolerance on these bolt mounting holes really, really tight. Now, some of you might say, ah, oh, why would I want it that tight? Um, but if you're like me and you take your FX impacts apart frequently, um, the one thing that drives me nuts about the factory scope rail is the fact that there's some side-to-side -side play. And when you're reinstalling the factory scope rail, depending on how you have this turned, you can actually have your scope rail mounted way off center from where it needs to be. And uh, you'll go to remount your scope and wonder why the heck you are shooting two feet to the right. Um, so because the tolerances on this dovetail rail or this mounting base are so tight, um, it makes it almost next to impossible to misalign the scope rail on your FX impact. All right, so I've got the four millimeter snug in the front. I've got the two, two and a half millimeter bolts snug up in the back. Um, you see, I just left the adjuster on here and I'll loosen that up a little bit. You can see once it's loosened up, it slides along the dovetail rail. Um, when you go to install the adjustable mount piece, uh, the piece that has the hinge or the piece that has the, the flex part that goes in the back, and the piece that does not move and it's just a single hinge that goes on the front. So we're gonna get this guy mounted up here and actually let's do, oh you know, I feel like it's a 20 MOA day for my adjustment. So do that. 
Now, typically when I would mount this, um, you know, I would torque all these bolts down to uh, the same. So, you know, my results would be repeatable as far as being able to dismount and remount without having much change to my point of impact or my zero. But for the purpose of this, just using some quick little T handles. All right. So there, we're on. So right now I've got this set up for uh, 20 MOA. I know that because I'm on the second hole back. Now I'm gonna show a picture on this video uh, just so you can see it. But on the lower left hand side of the rail, kind of on the underneath slant, um, Steven has pretty much hard coded in what these MOA adjustment points are. So it's very easy to remember and see what it is moving down the, the road in the future. So we're just gonna Pop the scope on here real quick. Not really setting it up for my personal use, but just so you can see it on the video. And there we go. So I now have my scope mounted on 20 MOA. Um, so now if I wanted to say, pop it up and say, let's go to 80 MOA. Uh, pretty simple affair. Loosen up. the mounting bolts here and what I'm able to do is lift this slide this over and let's see let's do this I'm gonna take this rear one out so I can get some more adjustment in here boom and then you just pop this rear bolt back in now again you know if I was mounting this for actual use I'd go ahead and torque that bolt down there on the rear uh, but you can see already on the video, I've got some pretty, uh, pretty nice cant forward as far as uh, my scope is concerned. And just to show you that it can go all the way up to that 120 MOA of adjustment, which that part's really cool. And yes, I am trying to find a spot where I can try to reach out to, you know, 500 yards plus to test this guy out. Look at that. And I'll make sure to take a picture of it and post it up if you can't really see it well on the video. Um, but my scope is, instead of like this, it is tilted that way officially. So uh, pretty, uh, you know, pretty big change there as far as the MOA is concerned. And again, uh, the thing I love about this, this is repeatable. So you're not having to sit there and take a guess or break out your calipers and try to measure you know how how high did I raise the rear of my uh, you know scope mount so I've got repeatable results when I need that extra bit of MOA adjustment so again that's something that really makes this product stand out and I think all of us have used the adjustable scope rings before and uh, one of the I'll say it uh, best things about there and hopefully you can catch on my sarcasm is the game of trying to loosen up and tighten the rear on the, of these scope rings so it's right where you want it to be. And uh, I think we all know too, if you've ever tried to readjust these scope rings, you will almost never get them back to the same spot. So Crawford and Lip provided a solution with this, uh, you know, with this great MOA adjustable scope rail. Now, the other thing I wanna show you here before we end our little video for the day is how the dovetail piece works. And again, uh, for me, that's actually one of my favorite parts of this rail is the fact that I've got a low profile dovetail to go along with this. So I'm gonna pop the mounting points off on the Picatinny rail piece. Loosen these guys up here. guy off that there let me get the lock piece pulled out and then uh, you know for for the scope that I have right here this is a arc in uh, the sh4 gen 2 love this scope by the way and all I do to utilize this dovetail rail is I just have these little snap-in Picatinny to dovetail adapters from Eagle Vision they work pretty darn slick with their scope rail, or scope uh, rings, I should say. And then all I have to do, we'll make this more in the usable position here, 
is tighten these back down on the dovetail rail. There we go. And bam, low profile, can fit between obstacles, um, or shoot, even if you're somebody that, uh, you know, you find that, uh, you know, the, the stock scope piece a little bit too high for you, this will help drop it down. I think I lost about three quarters of an inch in overall height, uh, somewhere right around there. So somewhere between three quarters and one inch total of overall height. Um, so I'll tell you, you may think it doesn't seem like a lot, um, but if you are doing events or uh, you know like an NRL 22 event, that three quarters to an inch makes a difference as far as being able to actually fit your rifle in some of these obstacles. Um, so for those of you who would just use the normal scope rail as far as buying this piece and using it for the MOA adjustment, one other product that Cropper makes that uh, I just want to highlight, and I've got a video on this uh, you know, from earlier, is their adjustable cheek rest. Um, the cool thing with the adjustable cheek rest, I think this partners very, very well with the adjustable scope mount um, because of the fact that it has a quick release to adjust the height that you want out of your cheek piece. And then once you've got the height that you want, you lock the quick release back in place and you've got that additional height. Um, so again, that's the really neat thing. Uh, you know, a lot of these Crawford and Lip products, uh, they tend to, uh, you know, work in sync with each other. And uh, this adjustable cheek rest is no exception as far as that's concerned. Uh, but don't want to take away from, uh, you know, the main point of this video, which is highlighting the brand new MOA adjustable scope rail from Crawford and Lipt. And just so you guys can see how easy this is to get back on here. Let's see, we'll pop this piece back here. Helps if I actually use the right Allen key size. Get this front piece locked back into place. So we're good there, we're good there. Let's go with 50 MOA. I believe 50 MOA is the third hole from the rear, so that should be where that needs to get set up there. And then, boom, slide this locking bolt for the rear hinge back in. Let's tighten these guys down. Boom. Boom. Lock the spacer. Let's see, that's the four mil. Lock the rear. Lock the front. And lo and behold, I now have a scope rail that's adjusted to 50 MOA. Um, so again, just to recap, awesome product from Crawford and Lift. It's a two-for-one scope rail, so you've got a low-profile dovetail rail that's the base. Um, works great for uh, competitive shooting or things like NRL 22 when you have to shoot from obstacles and some of the space can be tight. For you long-range guys out there that love just trying to stretch out and see how far you can push these awesome, awesome air rifles from FX, um, you know, you've got a up to 120 MOA adjustable scope rail um, and you no longer have to mess with your adjustable scope rings um, so really darn cool and uh, you know just to let everybody know again this is accurate this is repeatable results so you're not messing with the dial you're not messing with you know raising and lowering the you know rear scope mount and locking it back into place and hoping that you got it really darn close to where you needed it um, so that is really what makes this product stand out and you know once you got it all mounted up I'll be up front with you looks darn close to OEM and uh, you know heck if you can make it easier you can make it consistent you can make it repeatable I don't know why you wouldn't want to go ahead and purchase this for yourself um, so I'll link the product below um, to Crawford and Lips website. Again, this is the MOA adjustable scope rail that we took a look at today. If you have any questions, feel free, pop them below. And other than that, thanks for watching.